Arrow.net. It's where a lot of people go to pick up on their rock and roll. That sound old fashioned? Nah. We just like to rock. We like to talk. A R R O E. Dot net. Let's do it. Let's play it forward. These are real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 523 is with Rachel Bolin from Skid Row. I'm doing great, man. I, I got to tell you, this new album, oh my God, oh my God, you guys are really proving that rock has a staying place. And, and, and as underground as it may feel right now, this is the one that, that people are really going to embrace. Thank you very much, man. We're so proud of this record. We worked long and hard on this for sure and to see the the responses and hear the responses that we're getting it's uh it makes you feel like all your hard work is paying off you know well you take the song time bomb and and i mean you can hear the craftsmanship in it and and then you put it into the video and stuff and and you find yourself going oh my god this is an anthem i i could tr- truly get the, get into this in, in that form now oh, that's cool man uh yeah that man you're <clears throat> you're checking all the boxes for for what was going on in our head you know did did you go into the studio all at once or was it something where you're laying it down track by track? Well, working with Nick Raskulinix, uh, we do, did things a lot different than we usually do. He, um, we're used to laying down the drums, then laying down bass, then each guitar going in mm-hmm. separately. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, we, we were all in, in the control room while Rob was recording drums, and but we were all playing at the same exact time. So once we got the drum track, Believe it or not, Nick wanted the rhythm guitars on second. So, really? Yeah. And the way he did it, it, Scotty and Snake were facing each other while they played their rhythm tracks live, which was, I thought was the most, well, it's unique because to us, because we've never done it like that before. But the fact that uh, he just got that live feel where they're both like staring at each other and playing <laughs> off each other. And, and then I came in and did the bass after that and which was so odd for me hearing guitars on the track but it really i think it really made a lot of my bass lines come to life because it made me approach it from a completely different mindset and then um you know then the vocals came later which uh, eric was in stockholm while he was doing his vocals so that was really remote you know <laughs> when, when you put a, a, a thing like this together i wish i wish more listeners had the opportunity to see how songs are built they would respect it even more but when you're when you're in that studio and you're hearing let's say the rhythm section go first i mean it, it's got to be one of those things where i'd be I'd, I'd be the type of guy that would go over in the corner and write it and and sit there and say god dang i, I th- this is something that needs to be captured yeah it, it, it was it, like I said. It was such a unique experience for us the way it was done, and uh, it, it. I think it gave a lot of the music more energy and just gave it more of a live feel. Yeah, it, I, maybe that's one of the reasons why I really dig the song "Sheer Heart Attack." I mean, there, there's such a punk edge to this song, and it sounds so fresh, and it really does. It, you know, it gives you that that kick in the ass. Um, are, are we talking about not dead yet? I'm not sure. Uh, the, so sure. Well, I mean, in other words, it's it's I, it's one of those songs that really kind of just vibrates you when you get it, and so so I, it, there, there's parts of this album that really have the kind of like a punk attack to it. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, we it, we uh, like I said, just having those guys facing each other while they were playing it was something I think that really helped illustrate the point you were just saying that real just aggressiveness and, yeah. and and punk feel to it yeah well don't don't you think that that's what's missing from a lot of the music today so, so much of it is so formatic it's it's like okay we got a formula we got to do this okay no we're not going to harmonize on this well the reason why is because research shows but yet but yet as as artists you guys get to explore those those new elements well we, we were never a band to uh test formulas or, or follow research right uh you know results so it's it's hard for me to say what's missing and what's not we just know the way that we do it and uh it, it's worked for us for 30 some odd years you know being back out there on the road again what what is that vibe like because i mean you know it's it's one of those where it's like okay we had to go through the silent period but now it's it's like it's like a rejuvenated sight and sound uh it's been great uh, ever since eric joined the band he has brought a, a new energy that was missing for a long time uh and having someone so w- with the same work ethic um the same ridiculous sense of humor <laughs> the, the the same the, the same musical influences and the fact that he's uh 
just a lover of music in general, like we are, it, it, it really was a seamless change, you know, and, and we get out on stage and his energy has elevated us, mm -hmm. the four of us, just like when Rob Hammersmith joined the band, it brought Scotty snake and myself, it, it brought, it raised the bar for playing for, for musicianship. And then, you know, in walks Eric and he just lights everybody on fire. And it was, it's, it's been great. Touring has been great. The crowds have been great. Um, no one has looked at Eric sideways because they can't, you know yeah. what I mean? He's done such a fantastic job and, and continues to. It's almost like, you know, I always, I always, when I, when I see new members of bands and stuff like that, I always go, he's there for a reason. We've lived this life before. He knows exactly what's going to be happening. It, it seems like, you know, yeah. I mean, he's, he's a little bit younger. I, I jokingly say that we waited for Eric to graduate high school so we could get him <laughs> in the band, you know, but he, uh, he he just has has an energy about him, man. That that's so undeniable, and it's it's infectious, and it it, it lights all of us up. See, and that's what, what's really cool about that is that I, I love the way that classic rock radio stations now are starting to play second generation classic rock, which really opens up the door for the younger musicians to say, "Well, I want to be a part of that band." I but man, I I only got those guys on on the new rock radio stations. Well, now you guys are on the classic rock stations. Yeah, it's funny when I hear us on classic rock stations, uh, but I also, I you know, I also hear us on a lot of uh, just the, the AOR stations mm -hmm. and whatnot, and it's cool. It, it's great, man, to still have a song from our past on the radio for so long, and now starting to hear new stuff back on the radio. I can't even describe the feeling being around, having a career this that has spanned, you know, the better part of uh, you know thirty five years, and for people to be paying attention the way they are now it doesn't it doesn't get lost on us not for one second yeah because i mean the way that you guys write music in the first place and it may, maybe it's just my crazy self but but what i like to do is i like to take a song that is older but make it a modern song in my heart in the way that i don't want to live in the past i'm going to make this a song of my present uh yeah we we you know we really didn't make a conscious effort to to write to try to sound like anything mm -hmm. you know we just wrote songs and there was a pile of songs that didn't make it this is where uh you know nick rasculinix our producer stepped in and he he was a fan before he was a producer so he helped us retrace our steps which is a lot harder than it sounds you know when you've been around for over 30 years it, it, you're not the same 21 22 year old kid that wrote the first record obviously but he has that photograph in time in his head of how he felt when he first heard the first skid row record and when he first heard slave to the grind and he helped us retrace our steps and okay you used to write like this mm -hmm. do this more you know because we brought in songs where he just said that doesn't sound like skid row and you you really have to put your ego in your back pocket with Nick and it, it's I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all it was needed for us to to sit there and say okay we, he's a fan we need to connect with people just like Nick a lot of people just like Nick and he helped us do that and I think we're better players and we're you know the songs he took really good songs and made them really great songs and it, it's you know just by seeing the reaction uh, of everyone that's heard anything off the album it's uh he he uh he he is really good at what he does yeah, and yeah. and he he took us he took us to a great place to, to approach our songs man you just gave me a flashback of of times that i've been in the studio and and you're dropping vocals and you look over at the engineer and and through that glass and you're going oh he know i'm i'm off and, and but you trust those engineers so much mm hmm we put a lot of trust in Nick, like all of our trust. And, you know, we're, we're with the exception of Eric and Rob, you know, we're in our fifties and we've been, we're really close to what we do and to put your trust completely in songs that you've created to put your trust 100% in someone is a, is a big thing for us. And we did it though, without hesitation. And because he is, Nick is just a creative force. He, uh, he knows what's good. And like I said, you just got to kind of check your ego and say, all right, you know, he is right. And he's been, he was right. <laughs> he was right. <laughs> Every decision he made was right. And there were, there were a couple of things where we're, we're like, eh, we're not sure about this part. And he's like, well, give it, 
but give it a little more shot. Give it <laughs> one more shot if you don't like it. And then we play it and we'd, we'd either, you know what, dude, you're right. Or he's like, you know what? Yeah, get rid of that part. I see what you're saying now. And w- which is great because he's open minded. He's open minded. Man, I'm just glad you guys give yourself permission to continue to make music. And because you're a major part of, of the history of this nation as well as around the world, dude. Well, thank you, man. That means a lot to hear that. I really, really appreciate that. Well, please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. You know it, man.